What's happening, everybody? Welcome back. This is Forgum. Before we get into this video, I just want to address the elephant in the room, which is you don't see me. And the reason you don't see me, guys, is because whenever I try to run my camera and my encoding software, it crashes. Uh, I cannot put my camera on for whatever reason. I'm having some problems with my computer, and I've been having some problems with my computer. I mean, my computer is reaching almost two years old, and you know, I think it's time to upgrade. I think it's time to get a different one, but unfortunately, I'm just gonna have to wait till I get some funds before I can actually do that. So I do apologize for this little inconvenience, but you know, you can look at the bright side. At least you don't have to look at my ugly mug. Now let's get into the video. Now, it wasn't even that long ago that I did a run with Cable against Null Stage 50. Well, I have actually reached the point of being able to do Stage 54 with Null, or with Cable, sorry, which is awesome. So now I got to use Human Female, and boy, you're pretty limited on Human Females. I mean, Sharon Rogers and Moonstone are really the big two when it comes to getting in this high a level against Null. And I do have that brilliant CTP of Destruction, so I'm actually, I'm probably gonna end up slapping it on Moonstone, but then again, I mean, maybe not, I don't know. I mean, I do have Captain Marvel and Captain Marvel Moonstone got that sweet co-op uh, thing going on, but I might have to go with Sharon Rogers because she's the only one that's really gonna benefit from having White Fox and Wave. Wave's passive only applies to heroes. So it looks like I might have to go with Sharon Rogers with the brilliant CTB of Destruction. Let me know in the comments what you guys think about that. But I was able to do stage 54 with my cable, which I was very, very proud of. It was extremely close call. And you guys know the build, right? We got 48,000 energy attack. And then we do have max stats. And I'm going to show you guys a little bit different way that I'm playing him. A little bit more optimal way and a way that actually increases his survivability a little bit. Now, his critical rate is not maxed out. And if it was maxed out, you wouldn't have to really worry about using the second skill so much, right? The second skill gives 30% critical rate for five seconds. And the thing about this skill is... It does deal some hits, right? As soon as you hit that skill, it will deal some hits. If he ever stops... There we go, El. Like, as, as soon as he does it, he starts doing hits. So he can set up the proc really, really easy. So the rotation that I'm using is I run around, I build up my meter for my brilliant CTP of destruction, and I'll just go three, four, two, five. On the first rotation, I use the critical rate, right? Now, again, if your critical rate was maxed out, it wouldn't be a big deal, but you still would want to use that second skill to try to get your... Tier 3 off its cooldown to get it ready to use again. And then in the second rotation, what I'll do is I'll go 3, 4, 5, and then I'll just go Tier 3. Now, I do have my SFX on, and the reason I have my SFX on is it seemed like it was easier for me to keep the proc on the Tier 3 whenever I did it this way. Now, you won't do as much damage putting the proc on the Tier 3. However, if you're doing your Tier 3 every other rotation you're going to do more damage throughout the entire fight. You'll do more damage over time. And even with my build, you know, I got 25% pierce and I got 126% energy attack, which is pretty decent, but it was still extremely difficult. And it wasn't until I changed my rotation around before I was actually able to do this. He does have a fully awakened power of angry hawk set. And then, of course, we got the brilliant CTP. And luckily, this thing has some really, really good rolls. It's actually going to be extremely hard with Sharon Rogers because her survivability really isn't the greatest. But White Fox's passive will help a lot with that. So we'll see how that plays out in the future. And then Cable's uniform is at Mythic. So I'll go ahead and pull up the run for you guys so you can check this out. And this was, it was, it wasn't really too difficult. It took me about 30 minutes to be able to pull this off. And like I said, guys, at first you'll see me kind of screw up. I'll do three, four, two, five in the very beginning. And then what I'll do is I'll try to do three, four, two, five, tier three. I'll add in that two in the second time. And a lot of times when you put the second skill in there, it will trigger the proc early. Now there we got, see like right there, the proc actually triggered before we hit the tier three. So we didn't do near as much damage. But you'll see later on in this run, whenever you just don't use that second skill on your second rotation before you use your tier three, you will keep the proc on the tier three. So watch this, three, four. Well, there we actually hit the two. We actually did put the proc on the tier three. But you really do add a lot of survivability. And that's the thing, especially with Cable. Like, even if you're not doing quite as much damage by putting the proc on the tier three, instead of doing this, the proc on the fifth skill, 
Because you're adding survivability, I mean, Cable really is a glass cannon, and he dies so easy. Now, there you saw me hit three, four, five, tier three. And look at the damage, guys. I mean, you're just losing a little bit of critical rate. I got 63% critical rate. You know, you're talking, I mean, max critical rate is 75%. So you're talking about 12% difference in critical rate, which would make a difference in how much damage you're doing because you do more critical hits. But, I mean, if I had my critical rate maxed out, I wouldn't even have to worry about hitting that second skill. And there you saw me do it again. Three, four, five, tier three. Proc stays on the tier three, right? And you just do this every other two rotations which again just adds an insane amount of survivability sometimes i throw in the one skill to try to get that tier three get that uh percentage up a little bit higher on it so it'll be easier to cancel into it so we go three four five tier three and boom proc lands on the tier three we don't have to worry about null jumping on top of us so like right here you can attack them one time and after you attack them then you're gonna have to run around a little bit because it's gonna spread out the symbius there well, not quite. And poor Mystique here. She pretty much always takes the... Uh, she always bites it, man. Yep, every time. Every time I play this, poor Mystique always gets hit. Now we're going to be able to go into our Tier 3. And another thing, like right there, Null gets ready to jump on top of you. If you just do the fifth skill, like in this highest stage, he will kill you. So being able to go into your Tier 3 and go into that iframe really, really helps your survivability. Something fierce. I mean... That's what it is, man. And then timing your switches like that. I mean, whenever you get down to two characters, uh, I've, I've been getting a lot of practice because I've been doing this. But, you know, now, you know, Cable, I'm going to be in the, you know, replace, put that brilliant CTP of destruction, probably on Sharon Rogers. I mean, I'm pretty sure that's my best bet because I can at least take advantage of White Fox and Waves passive, right? Whereas Moonstone, all I would have is Captain Marvel which wouldn't be good enough. We'd actually need another support to be able to do this high stage, even with a brilliant CTB of destruction. Moonstone's strong, but she isn't that damn strong. That'd be insane if she could do this with just Captain Marvel's leadership. Wow, that'd be nuts, but I don't think so. Especially after whenever I had it on her before, uh, in a much lower stage, I just don't think, I just don't think it's going to happen. Probably better off to go with Sharon, I'm sure. And honestly, I don't know how hard that's going to be. I mean, it's, it's, I mean, th this is pretty rough, right? This is pretty rough. Okay, switch. There we go. So you see me like a couple times, you got to just time that switch really well. There, I'm just trying to squeeze in a little bit of damage. Try to get a little bit in there. Try to hurt on all. Here, I got a little worried. You know, the tornadoes are kind of yeah, getting a little closer, by, getting too close to comfort. Now, whenever the tier three is ready, I'll go ahead and hit three, four, two, get that extra critical rate, and then the five, and then the tier three to do a little bit more damage. I'm gonna try to squeeze in a little bit more here. There we go. And you really do have to play super, super aggressive, either if your character isn't strong enough to do the stage, or if you're just in such a high stage that it takes an enormous amount of damage to take Null down. So you, you gotta play super, super aggressive. It's another reason why these are such difficult clears. Uh, to do but really once I can get cable past the first two phases actually the first phase isn't that bad but the second phase once I can get him past the second phase it really isn't that bad to do this like this this part of the fight isn't that bad at all it's just I got to be real careful about switching my characters here and look at that I mean 31 seconds guys and I can't attack right now right because cable will die so I have to be you know I have to wait until Thor comes in and slams down Mjolnir on Null before I can actually attack. So we are pushing this. I mean, we are going as far as we can. And honestly, I don't know if Cable could go any higher. He probably could go a little bit higher uh, with this team composition. I mean, if I could use White Fox with him, it would have made a big difference. You know, because he does have the leadership tag. But unfortunately, we can only use mutants here. And that's kind of the way Onet Marvel gets you. And look at this, guys. Look at this. Wow. Zero. When we come down to the wire, we barely finished this damn fight. But we did do it in the right amount of time, right? We did get it done. Stage 54 clear with my man, Cable. Getting it done, man. You know, at first, when I first did stage 50, I wasn't really sure if he'd be able to do it or not. But, I mean, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he can, you know, sometimes things, you know, can be a little bit deceiving. You know, you might do a stage, an early stage, and you think, oh, the damage doesn't look quite good enough. But uh, then you find out, yeah, the character can actually get it done. So 
I might end up probably taking this obelisk off of cable and probably slapping that thing on Sharon Rogers because I really think this is the only character that I can use against Null uh, stage 54 and up. I mean, there, I have no other characters. I mean, again, Moonstone, she's only going to have Captain Marvel. She can't take advantage of White Fox and Wave, whereas Sharon Rogers can. I mean, she's the only character that I have available that has a shot of being able to do this. So we'll see how that goes, guys. And let me know what you think about Cable taking down stage 54 Null. And I do stream on Twitch at 9 p.m. GNT plus 7 time. The link is in the description below. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching, y'all. Take care and have a good one. See ya.